surface prep for our guitar. Uh, there are a couple different steps. Um, it's kind of three phases. One is sanding everything. So I want to start um, probably with somewhere around 150, um, maybe 120, but 120 is a, um, a, a little bit aggressive for the way this guitar is right now. We've already done a lot of prep work on this guitar in the sense that we've taken the sides and the back, um, presumably through a sander that got us to 120, the top um, probably to at least 120. Some of you may have gone further to 150 or 180, but 150 or 180 is kind of where I want to start. And just looking at it, I can see some glue spots here, 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 that I'm going to sand off. Uh, I would rather sand these spots than scrape it. Uh, I don't really want to scrape this spruce top. And I want to get this pencil line out of there and any other issues, um, bumps, dings, scratches, those kinds of things I want to get out of here. And really 150 is probably a safe place to start, uh, at least on the top, probably the sides as well. Let's take a look at the sides. These actually don't look too bad. So I am definitely going to start at 150, maybe even 180 on the sides. I don't see any big scratches that I need to get off. There. Or there. This actually looks really good. What I'm looking for is just surface scratches, especially if uh, we ran these through a drum sander at an angle, we would see some cross scratches. And I got most of those out scraping the back um, when I was uh, scraping the bindings got most of that off so it doesn't look bad right now at all I wouldn't want to see any scratches especially cross grain scratches I would want to sand all those out of there get everything totally smooth and we know the shoulder looks good because we just matched the neck up to that and what I'm also going to be looking for are any areas along the bindings that need filling where the the binding didn't get pressed up quite enough into the body or where there was maybe a pocket of glue that was preventing it um, where we didn't clamp well enough and usually where I would see something like that is probably here where the two ends butt up against each other in the waist, especially, waist is kind of a classic area to see some areas that need filled. But I don't have any of those. Okay, well, um, I don't see any spots at all. All right, let's make something up. Now, depending on the area you need to fill gaps in, uh, is going to depend on what you use. In this area where I've got rosewood that's pretty dark right next to ebony that is black, uh, I would use something like a black super glue. Something like this, black medium. Uh, this is really difficult to find and I've tried to source this locally at our hobby shops and I just can't. I use my luthier supply warehouses to find it because I just can't find it locally. All right. So in this area, let's say I've got a gap right here. Well, I'm just going to come in, put a dab of glue there, spread it out a little bit. And this is medium, so it's a little thicker. I'll let it sit. There are two ways you can cure super glue. One is time, just letting it sit. The other is to use an accelerator spray. I like to use the accelerator spray just because it makes it instant, it makes it quick. In some cases, it can uh, flash it too fast and you can end up with uh, some white lines or even some bubbles or clouding if you're using um, clear stuff. 
but this black holds up rather well to the accelerator spray. And then I've got 180 on a block. And that's it. So our gap is now filled and we can move on. This super glue technique that I use for gap filling works great in most areas except the spruce. Spruce is a tough one, uh, especially in areas like this waste where we've got lots of greens running in. And so if we fill this with glue, that super glue is gonna end up wicking into those fibers and it can wick quite a ways and it will discolor the glue underneath your finish and it will turn yellow. One thing that I found helpful if you need to super glue fill near spruce is to use a spray shellac or use like a one pound cut if you have that around let it completely dry and then fill with the super glue i say super glue really it's ca or cyanoacrylate it's uh super glue is just it's it's a brand name generic name that i use uh probably shouldn't do that i'll just call it ca from now on if you want to use that ca seal it with shellac, then drop it. There are some colored CAs. Uh, in addition to the black, there is a medium brown and there is white, and there might be some other colors out there as well, I don't know. Spruce is notoriously difficult for using uh, CA glue on because it can wick into the fibers and discolor it. If you need to do repairs on spruce, Again, there's a bunch of different ways to do that. It depends on how bad it is, where it's cracked. It depends uh, on a lot of factors. But uh, an animal glue like hide glue is probably a good candidate for spruce. The uh, PVA glues or a typical like tight bond kind of yellow glue is a good candidate for spruce repairs, things like that. Spruce does not have a grain that we need to fill. So I am going to leave this alone for now and move on to the backs and sides. I'm going to sand the backs and sides. Since we're doing a French polish, uh, I will probably go up to 320 for the French polish. So I'll start out with 150, I'll do 150, 180, 220, and then 320. So I'll go through this with four grits. We really don't wanna go any higher than 320 if we plan on applying a film finish, which is most finishes out there. If you're doing an oil finish, that's a little different story, and you can probably go up to higher grits. But if you get it, start getting into uh, 400 and above, a film finish is just not going to stick. There's, you just don't have the surface tension uh, for the finish and your sealer to stick properly to it. At least the ones that uh, I've historically used. Maybe there are some out there that um, don't have a problem with that, but, but I've seen and have had problems with finishes adhering to surfaces sanded to 400 or higher. Spruce is not an open grain. There are no pores to fill, no grains to fill. So really it's just sanding it and that should get us where we want to be. The backs and sides are a little different story. On this particular guitar, it's rosewood. And uh, if you've ordered the kit to go along with this course from uh, LMI, then you probably got a rosewood, although there are plenty of options out there. Most of them are going to be an open grain. There are very few exceptions uh, one of them being maple. Maple, you do not need to do any uh, filling or pour filling, anything like that. There are a ton of ways to pour fill. We can use shellac with uh, sawdust. We can use a paste wood filler from the hardware store. We can use um, many kinds of epoxy. We can use CA glue. Uh, we can use Bondo and color it. We can even use 
uh, drywall spackle and dye it to whatever you'd like. And I'll show you exactly what I'm going to use in just a minute. Now what we're looking for is to fill all the open green uh, of this rosewood. There's just, there's a lot. East Indian rosewood has a very fine pour. It's, they're not large open pours, um, smaller than mahogany. You can take ingrain dust and mix it with shellac. Use shellac as a binder and rub that in, rub that all around with some, uh, with a pad and then sandpaper. You can use egg whites for a pour filler. Uh, I've done that on one guitar, but that was a pretty specific application. My customer wanted a bit of an antique look to it, so we did a sizing with uh, egg whites. I'm not going to do that here, but I do have another product I'm going to use, and it's uh, called Rubio Wood Filler Quick. I like to use that because it is a good match for this rosewood color. So what we want to do is first get our surface prepped, get everything ready to go. And then we are going to muck it back up with a pore filler. And then we're going to sand back that pore filler uh, maybe a couple of times and see if we can't get everything filled and take a look at it in a raking light. See how much of the pore fill we've got, how much we've got left, and make some determinations from there. So for right now, taking the top down, to 320, taking the back and sides to 320, breaking the edges of our binding. And that is especially critical here in this lower bout area. And if I was doing an armrest bevel, it would kind of be in this area here. And that's exactly where I want to be fairly aggressive about mowing over these bindings and getting these nice and round and comfortable for that forearm position when uh, the player is resting here. Everywhere else we'll just break the binding edge a little bit to get finish to stick there. Then I will round over the edges here of my sound port holes and then that will take us up to pore filling. So these descriptions so far are probably enough. So I'm going to hold off on doing anything more and we'll just pick that up in the next video. We'll see you then.